World's End Junior School in Birmingham. Of the 230 pupils on roll, 17% come from a minority ethnic background and 10 children have a statement for visual impairment. Sukbinda Bakra and Claire Duncan are frequent collaborators. Claire teaches Year 3 and Sukbinda teaches Year 5. Both teachers are considering applying for the science coordinator's job when the current coordinator leaves at the end of the year. And both Claire and Sukbinda are keen to improve their skills in continuing professional development and to build a confident and creative approach to teaching primary science. Someone who helps teachers to do just that is internationally renowned primary science expert Rosemary Feezy. Creativity means a lot of different things. Basically, it's perhaps looking at things differently, thinking about things differently, and eventually having the confidence to take risks with your ideas and what you do in science. A lot of teachers think they're not creative or feel that they're not creative because of SATs, Ofsted, etc. Teachers need to put those ideas aside and remember that they need to be creative for their own sake their own professional sake to enjoy their job but also for them to provide opportunities for children to be creative. Rosemary's come to World's End to spend some time with Sukbinda and Claire as they plan two science lessons. In our second programme we'll see how Claire's Year 3 class look at light and shadows. They'll be using light sensors to investigate the best materials to make sunglasses. What have you predicted, George? Purple. And why do you think the purple film will let the most light through? Because it's um, transparent. Is it transparent? Translucent. Translucent, Translucent it is. In Sukbinda's lesson, we'll see Year 5 look deeper into the same subject by examining solar eclipse. What happens when there's an eclipse? The moon covers up the sun and it causes the earth to be dark. So, what are these two teachers hoping to get from a CPD session with Rosemary? I would like to be more creative at the end of this project um, in my approach to science. So it's not all teacher-led and it's not all knowledge-based. We're just coming to the end of light and shadows topic. So um, we've covered that, well, they know that they need um, light in order to see. They understand that there's a light source. We've briefly touched on translucent, transparent and opaque, um, but I was wondering if we could develop that further and go on, take it on to the next step. How do your class like surprises? They love surprises. <laughs> Great. Have you ever used a surprise box? No. <laughs> just something like this. Here's my, my surprise box. Wow. It's just a box. Good. We open the box, pull out whatever it is that'll be inside the box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that might set me up with a story. So it's a way into the lesson. Yeah. Now I'm thinking of light shining, materials, the application of that. And it takes me to some, a nice investigation, which is not an unusual one for this age group, and that's which is the best sunglasses. Oh, right. that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> we could perhaps get them to make their own sunglasses. Yes, yeah. And use it as the start of an investigation, yeah. Have you ever used light sensors? No, we haven't. Light sensors will be really useful for this activity. And what they would do is just have different colours, not necessarily sunglasses, but you could put just cellophane, different... Different colour cellophane. ...filters in. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other groups might actually be predicting, but also designing and making their sunglasses. Yes. So they would be occupied. And actually what's that? more like a DT activity. Yes, you design. It will. I plan it out cross -curricular. Design, so you have cross curricular in one class. That seems to have caught Claire's imagination. What about Sukbinda? I think the year five are probably ripe for something that's almost like science fiction. Right. To get them to really understand eclipses. What if, for example, we were in the middle of an eclipse and instead of the eclipse continuing and passing over and we got daylight back, it stopped on full eclipse? Run like War of the Worlds. Set a scenario with them. Even show, if you've got a, a video clip, which you can get off the net very mm -hmm. easily, of an eclipse happening. But then as the eclipse runs, stop the eclipse when you've got the total eclipse. Mm -hmm. And then set the scene saying, what if it continued a full eclipse for six months, for a year? How would your lives change? It would be an awesome event, but then it's supposed to go away. And the things we know about an eclipse are things like the birds stop singing, the temperature drops, and if you can prompt them with some of that information, then they've got some ammunition in their minds to then suggest 
What would happen to me as an individual? My first concern uh, about that, it sounds wonderful, um, is am I getting away from my science teaching and the objectives yeah, I need good. to cover? Um, bringing in science, mm -hmm. science fiction, it sounds really creative, but then is my focus on literacy, on speaking yeah. and listening? If you get your children, for example, if each group had to be a news team and explain what had happened and explain to their audience what should have happened, Mm -hmm. and find a way of role-playing that or making a model to show mm -hmm. it. And then they, as a newsreader, start to explain what people's worries are, what scientists' worries are. Can you see how the subject knowledge is there being mm -hmm. applied and it also provides you with an assessment point? Mm -hmm. Do they understand eclipse? Mm -hmm. Do they understand how the planets mm -hmm. work? So how useful has it been having input from an outside expert? It's definitely made me think about my approach to science differently. I would never have dreamed of using a story as a basis for a science lesson before. It's a really good approach. Two really big things have come out for me. One is how I can use problem solving, a problem that a child posed, and move that on. And secondly, how valuable it's been working across year groups like this, because I'm thinking, if in year three, Claire's using light sensors, where do I need to take the children on to in two years' time? The most difficult thing for Sukhbinder and for Claire will be to step back on the process whilst they're engaged with the children and watch the children and see what the children are offering and listen to them and to reflect during the lesson on the quality of what's going on in that classroom and actually enjoy that magic moment when those children will be working away and not even know they're in the room. That'll be success for them. As a result of this planning session, Claire's going to open her Year 3 lesson with a surprise box containing a teddy bear who needs some new sunglasses. Some of the class will design and make frames for the sunglasses, while the others will use light sensors to investigate which materials will make the best lenses. Sukhbinder's plans for her Year 5 class will challenge them to explore what might happen if a solar eclipse lasted for six months. They'll investigate the changes that happen during a normal eclipse and project what the consequences might be if the sun became covered over for a very long time. As part of their CPD strategy, Claire and Sukhbinder will take part in each other's lessons, providing support with the children and an assessment of the lesson for discussion later. I am ready for the lesson. Light sensors were a little bit of an issue, but we've sorted that out now. Uh, the children haven't used the light sensors before, uh, so I'm hoping that they'll cope with that very well using new technology. Um, I'm as ready as I'll ever be, so I'd better go. <laughs> Assisting Claire in her Year 3 class today are Claire Butler, an NVQ student, and Wendy Cooper, a visual impairment support assistant, who will be working with Khaled. OK, children, I have got something in this box that is a clue to what our lesson is going to be about today. Now, you already know what the topic is, so has anybody got any ideas what might be in my surprise box? Aaliyah? A torch. Not a torch. Christopher, on the blue table, looks like he's got an idea. You've forgotten it? Forgot. Yeah. Oh, he's forgotten it. Oh, dear. OK, let's see. Uh, Courtney. A light bulb. It could be a light bulb. I'm going to give you another clue. The title for the story that I'm going to read you is Barney's Day at the Seaside. So has anybody got any ideas what Barney might need at the seaside? Chloe. Sunglasses. Fantastic. You're absolutely right. Shall we have a look? Shall we? Wow, this is Barney, and we're going to be learning about his sunglasses today. But first, I'm going to tell you a story. One sunny day, his family planned a trip to the seaside. His owner gave him a gift. It was wrapped with a big gold bow. Who wants to come and rub out the wrapping paper? Let me see. Lucy, would you like to come and rub out the wrapping paper and see what Barney's gift was? pair of sunglasses, well done. They had a wonderful time playing in the sand. Barney took off his sunglasses so that he could go on the water slide. He really enjoyed it, but what do you think happened next? Luca? 
He could lose his sunglasses. He couldn't find his sunglasses. He looked everywhere. Barney cried and cried. What could he do? Khaled. He could look in the sand for his glasses. Oh, he looked in the sand and they weren't there. I'll tell you what's going to happen. We are going to help Barney. We're going to make Barney some new sunglasses. Some of you are going to design and make the frames for Barney's sunglasses for him. And some of you are going to investigate which material will make the best lenses. How are we going to test to see how much light the material lets through? What could we do to find out? Annalise. Put it by the light. Is there another way, Harvey? A light sensor. We could use light sensors to make it really scientific. The other groups, designing and making the frames, your learning objectives are to make decisions to design and make the glasses, and to evaluate the glasses. Off you go. In St Binder's Year 5 lesson, she'll be assisted by Sally Farrell, a visual impairment support assistant, who's there to support Eddie. Claire will also be in the classroom to lend a hand and to offer some constructive CPD criticism later. When the children come in, I think they will be really excited because I haven't used the whiteboard with them. It's something new for them. I'm a little bit nervous about how I'm going to, to cope with making sure the programme runs well. Um, but I'm looking forward to how the lesson develops. Last three weeks, children, we've been studying the Earth, the Sun and the Moon. Can you tell me some of the things we found out already? It takes a year for the Earth to go around the Sun and it takes the Moon, is it, a month to go around the Earth. The Sun is not moving, it's the Earth moving to make it look like the Sun's moving across the sky. We're going to learn a little bit more about the eclipse and what happens when there's an eclipse. I want you to imagine that this has actually happened today and you've seen that happen. What are your thoughts? What have you been thinking about while we're watching the clip? I was thinking how many people were crowding around and how special it is to them. And because it's like, it's revolutionary really, because <coughs> you don't really get to see an eclipse every day. Let's go from there. We're out in the school playground. I want you to think about what would happen if that eclipse stayed for not just a few minutes but for a whole day or maybe you didn't know when it was going to stop. What do you think it would be like if this happened for more than a day, more than a week, for an indefinite period? Would you turn to somebody on your table and discuss that please? In the next programme, we'll see what St Binder's Year 5 class discover about solar eclipse and how imaginative they can be in presenting their findings. Yippee, no school! And we'll see how scientific and creative Year 3 get with their light sensors and sunglasses. We'll also find out what Claire and St Binder thought about each other's lessons and their professional development in teaching science.